Okay. Okay, boom. Are you introing this one or am I introing this one? Well, now I guess I'm introing it. So, welcome back to an episode of um, The Two Bears. Um, it's great having you back. And as always, your two beautiful hosts, Declan Morrissey with two R's and two S's, and me, Artem. So, you know, Declan's going to kick us off. And oh, okay. yeah. the floor is yours, Baba. Okay, so uh, Artie here, and I decided to do a little... Uh, program design overview and uh i don't know how he's gonna do his but i just kind of am gonna take a client that i had this summer and show you this individual's program and kind of go through uh my rationale for it so let's just hope this works start sharing screen hopefully my my whole thing doesn't cut out Artie, can you see this yes I can. uh perfect um so let's see here so this person wanted to kind of improve their endurance and they wanted to basically just, I mean, they wanted to get a push up, right? And they wanted to do all this strength work and then they wanted to do a bunch of endurance stuff. Um, and so the gym that I worked at had a real foundation in believing in like really uh, short intervals, mm. like glycolytic intervals basically for uh just like a bunch of repeats mm. and so i kind of tossed all of that out the window and obviously went with longer intervals and just basically built um duration over time um so right like she's building to the ultimate like 12 minute all out here um by doing three four minute repeats three four minute repeats then a two by six minute repeat and then a one by 12 minute repeat um you know, looking at this now, I probably could have done this a little better, but uh, hey, you know, you live, you learn, you repeat your mistakes a bunch of times, and then you uh, stop messing it up eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and what? Okay. What? Just keep... What? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. I wasn't saying anything. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, this is really just trying to target uh, the aerobic system. Obviously, uh, you know, there's a bunch of, oh, here we go. There, there we go. All right. Uh, I forgot about that. Um, but this is just targeting the aerobic system at kind of like a lower intensity than uh, necessarily like associated with a glycolytic intensity. Um, as well, like I tried to make it mode specific, but this is blank because this individual just has a tough time, like really um, locked on to one specific thing um you know but i tried to push her to do all of her intervals on the the runner because we have like the the true form runner at the gym mm. and she really wanted to get better at running mm. so i pushed her to do all these on the run if she felt like beat up or something like that then i tried to go um bike and then just put the seat really high uh, because like a higher seat kind of translates a little better to uh, the mechanics of like upright running. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, there you go. And then six minutes all out um, on any modality she chose. Um, again, like this is more actually, so like this is kind of like a specific work, like a skill acquisition work almost. This is more of like a, a physiological response sort of work. So like this is the concept of critical power. Question, but, question. Uh, okay, bye bye. <laughs> I don't know if you can see me raising my hand, but I just have a question. No, uh, I can't. Okay, well then I'm just gonna start saying question. Um, like with the like bicycle instead of the treadmill, she doesn't feel too well. Why don't you just put it like on an elliptical or something? Like I feel like that's like almost even more like running kind uh, of. We it. don't. We just don't have an elliptical at the gym that I worked at. Well, like would you put them on an elliptical if you had one, or you still think that like the, uh, the bike is a better choice? Um. I think like either one is probably a good choice. Like it doesn't really matter all that much to me. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I'm just asking. I'm just like because I don't think there's actually there's a that big of a difference. But I just thought yeah. maybe you, know, you would maybe pick the one or the other. But no, I I generally kind of don't like the elliptical anyway. I just don't feel like it does very much. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, it's time to change hats now uh, because you know in Bro Research Radio. Pat Davidson changed his hat three times. I'm going for four today, uh, which is, you know, Bro's Research Radio is definitely not at all what I base this podcast off of. Anyways, 
Um, so now, you know, I was wearing this, this here Cinnamon Rainbows hat. Didn't even work there. Now I'm wearing this uh, Super Training Gym hat, which is great. Um, you know, really hurts my head. Um, so anyways, uh, right, the six-minute all modality has to do more with, like, a physiological response. So um, just trying to get this lady to, like, mash on something really, really hard. Mm. Um, and so the thing I was going for here is something called critical power. And so critical power, if you – it's – basically like the amount of output your heart absolutely needs to keep you going through whatever you're doing so and and you can you can express that in like wattage on a bike um so like let's say artem is biking in the tour de france and they're on uh stage i think it's like 18 is the mountain stage mm. and you're outputting 300 watts but your your and your critical power is 310 so as soon as you hit 310 you're just like Ugh! oh god uh it's all over and you just like fall off the bike so like pushing the critical power up slowly is a good good way to um like get someone to be in better shape progressively mm. um and there are some, I mean, there are some great studies on this that if I can find them on my computer, then I'll, we can put in the description of this thing. Um, let me see here. So then, um, so what's great about the, uh, with the bikes we had and the air runner we had is that you could program this, the, those things to kind of give you, I, maybe even the, the ski erg and the rowing erg that are at the gym. Um, it could be programmed to give you like a six minute, um, oh, that was deafening. Um, <laughs> uh, <God laughs> today. uh, anyways, it was, you could program it to give yeah. you like a six minute right. modality thingy and, uh, like a six minute time cap. And if you, and then you, it would give you like, Hey, this was your average Watts. This was your peak Watts. And so you could just kind of slowly say like, okay, like week one, you did, you know, your average was, you know, 900 watts. Second week, it was 950. Third week, oh my God, it was 1,000. You know, the week four, what happened there? It was 950 again, you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, med ball circuit, I would just consider this abs, like all day abs. Um, just trying to get like, because my, my assumption here is that like nothing is going to go as planned in these two. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I guarantee you that it's just going to be all sagittal plane muscles working, and there's not going to be a single, like, triplanar occurrence. So just trying to do, like, a really simple med ball slam circuit mm -hmm. um, and just trying to coach it so that it's, like, a little less sagittal. Obviously, the chest pass is going to be pretty GD sagittal, but you can still kind of get them to exhale, and then you're actually going to move a scap on a rib cage as opposed to just, like, pushing your rib cage forward in space or backwards in space and just maintaining a locked in scat position. So that's kind of why I did those. Um, and like, as you can see with everything, I'm just kind of trying to linearly progress. 90, 90 breathing is positional restoration. You know, I mean, just simple, simple stuff there trying to go, uh, you know, a little parasympathetic at the end of the workout. All right. Any questions so far from the peanut gallery? No. So far, okay. so good. Then I will continue, man. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Um, and so then, uh, this is kind of late in the, the stages of progression, so kind of programming a, a higher volume but uh, and higher intensity for a band assisted push up here using just a red or an orange band, so those really, really thin bands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and just, I mean, really, like it was literally just skill acquisition of moving like a heavy load, which was her body weight, you know, against gravity. It was, you know, it was really kind of crazy to see that, like, you know, she, I don't think she got any stronger, <laughs> to be really honest. I just think she got better at organizing herself to do a push-up mm -hmm. in a way that, like, she thought that I wanted her to do the push-up. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was interesting to see that. Um, Anti-rotation step back again, like just 
obliques and but mostly transversus abdominis. So like if you if you reach out then and, and you're resisted, like transversus abdominis will should naturally come on unless you're like super extended. Um, which is kind of impossible with this because if you step backwards, then you actually like physically cannot step back unless you have like good stance mechanics on the leg that you're maintaining stance on. So it really forces some good uh, stance phase activity in my head. Um, and people are generally like, oh, wow, I really feel my sides with this thing. And you're like, yeah, amazing. I don't know, I don't know, what, uh, I don't know why that would happen. Um, and so deadlift, um, so this lady's sacrum is pretty GD, uh, mutated, um, to say the least, um, just from like scans she has and, and all this stuff. Like I didn't, I didn't even need to test her to see that. So she's pretty cool. Like made it easy on my part. Thanks doctors. Um, so I did cluster sets here because I, for pure simple reasoning, like it was literally either like have her pull from the floor with clusters or elevate her and have her just pull straight reps because I swear to God, like every time she set the bar down and didn't reset between each rep, mm -hmm. it just was like, you know, I mean, you know, it's like sumo deadlift thing because this lady just, oh no, she, no, she did a conventional. Um, you know, it was like, you know, it was like this was her back angle when she reset and then it was like this if she didn't reset every time. So... <laughs> I was like, whoa, Whew. I'm glad I saw that happen, um, you know, so, uh, and then again, uh, you know, just 10 breaths and side planks, um, you know, I mean, more internal obliques because those babies need to come on if you're gonna, like if so, if you're going to compress a thorax on one side, so you're, you're kind of like taking, so if this is your pelvis, like the top of your iliac crest, and this is your rib cage, and you're like this, mm. and you need to, you're going to compress them, and this compression is going to happen with your internal obliques. Mm. So this is again just a like a a simple like repositioning exercise if it's coached correctly. Well, which, what's, well what did the side plank? Well, actually, go ahead, finish, and then I'll ask. Okay, um, and then the eccentric push up with a pause. Um, I really. Uh, you know, I, I just kind of look at that. Well, when I wrote this, I just kind of thought, well, like, you know, her super maximal uh, weight is a push up. So I might as well just throw, like, so, so you have to do super maximal to gain actually any eccentric, excuse me, um, strength. Mm -hmm. um, because of like Titan and, uh, you know, that thing will just kind of allow you to contract really hard against eccentric load, but then it doesn't really have anything to do with the concentric pushing, so it doesn't uh, carry over that way, which is unfortunate, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, and then the pause is to just kind of reinforce that position again and build strength within that uh, specific position. And then, like, obviously, like, I think her muscle is strong enough. I just don't think her nervous system was... Uh, good enough, which is really where the pause comes in because it increases, you know, it should hypothetically increase rate coding and, and all that good stuff. Plus like specific angles create strength within those specific angles. And then, uh, I'll just finish this day and then you can ask your question. I'll change my hat again. Um, <laughs> that a four rounds, 800 meter bike rest is needed. Um, I mean, to me, this is just, again, like a skill acquisition work within like the range that she really wanted to do. Like I thought that was going to take her, mm, you know, maybe, maybe 45 seconds. Um, you know, but I really am kind of doubtful as to if she used glycolysis at all for that, just because I don't think it was a high enough intensity uh, effort to really like, you know, go crazy on glycolysis. And the rest is needed thing. It's just because like, you know, here it's like three to four minutes, you know, and I encouraged her to only rest for, I think like two minutes between each of these, mm. you know, med ball circuits as fast as you can. So really I just look at it as like taking stress away by being like, Hey, like take your time, you know, like take five minutes between these efforts. If you want to go, you know, 
Yeah. All right, what's your question? Change my hat here. I don't know. I have to have, like, my... Uh, the first question was going to be about the side plank. Um, like, what kind of side plank... Like, are you doing, like, the side plank with them that like, you would do at Iron Sports? Like, are you doing, like, a different version or... What yeah. Kind of... I, I do all the side planks from the knees. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it's, it's way easier. Okay. Well, uh, second question, like, I'll go again to that. Like, have you seen... Uh... uh... Yeah, it was like, it was Pat Davidson showing like like a a different way of doing like the side plank where you push your feet against a box and then you kind of extend with the arm and stuff like that. And like, have you yeah. tried that one or maybe like trying to implement that or just like maybe fuck um, it? Truthfully, I haven't tried to implement that just because like you know it, there's a like generally there's probably fifteen to twenty people in in the gym at the same time as like this individual is, and so it's like hard for me to coach, you know, 19 other people who are all like, hey, how do I, how do I do this inverted row that I've been doing for three years? Oh, I remember now. It's on the box. It's like, no, it's not on the box, actually. It's, it's on the rings over there. Um, oh, dear. Ser- seriously, that's what happens. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that's really the only reason I haven't. Um, okay. You know, and like if I and like whenever I had the time to do that sort of thing, like that's exactly what I would do. Like if it, you know, if someone came in and they were like, my shoulder is so jacked up, I can only do this. Mm-hmm. You know, that's as far as I could go. I'd be like, okay, like, you know, screw the other people in here. <laughs> like there's another coach here. I'm going to take you and we're going to do hardcore PRI. But, um, you know, like, it's kind of like a circular kind of thing to me in that like you need to you need to start with really good motor learning and then you need to learn how to like work really hard and then you need to come back to really good motor learning but it needs to be a better like a a, a higher level of learning than you were before and i think this person is just at that level where like you still need to work really effing hard mm. and not worry so much about like okay like do I really feel my side abs on this? And am I pushing myself away? Like, do I feel my rib cage when I push myself away? You know, and it's just like, you just need to work hard in like decently good positions. Mm. It's kind of my thought on that. All right, well, um, yeah, well, second question though is like, with, with this whole program, is this like, you know, say like it's a new client who just walked in and it's like, you know, day one, week one, like you're doing it with them. Or is this someone that you've been doing with and it's like, you know, further down the path to like, this is this is someone who's further down the path. I think she's been at the gym for okay, uh, like at least a year. Yeah, okay. I think at least a year. Because I was just gonna ask, like, with the anti rotation step back, I feel like the step back like might be a thing like you should maybe like like implement a bit later down the road. But like if yeah. you know, if they if they've been there for you know a while, then definitely makes total sense. You know, to kind of progress it a bit. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's also just like hard for me to do some of these things because I'm not a year round coach there. Yeah. Like yeah. I was an intern last summer and then this summer I'm, you know, I was a full coach and yeah. like I was only there a few days a week too. So it was just like, you know, it was, it was hard, you know, like if I had, you know, and, and the other thing is like, you know, how it happens at that gym is like, you're almost like randomly assigned clients. So like, you know, for me, I, you know, I'm like, uh, so I really want you to feel all of your abs, but I don't want you to feel down the middle, you know, and the other coaches are just like, that plank looks amazing, John. And, and it's like, no, no reference to like, hey, like, what do you feel? Oh, you just feel your back while you're doing this. That's probably not good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like a mixture of like, different coaching styles and me not really having like the the real like oomph to get in there and and really uh take this thing to the next level but hey you know beggars can't be choosers facts facts well yeah right. I, I have no more questions so far so you know if you want to keep going all right i'm very excited thank you man um so let me see here um now, I want to mention my hat. As everyone can probably see, it's the NHL. I have the Detroit Red Wings on, um, you know, because I am kind of a Red Wings fan. Um, 
for many reasons. But anyway. What? Since when the heck are you a Red Wings fan? Dude, since uh, maybe uh, somewhere, somewhere in high school there. They kind of suck. I'm not going to lie to you. Anyway, I'm more of a Florida Panthers fan. I'm, you know, I'm just, look, it's just shit changes. Okay, man? Yeah, I get it. It's just, uh, it's just. Anyways, I'm, I'm more of a Springfield Thunderbirds fan if we're ah. being really. Uh, anyways. <laughs> um, so this is, this is, this is a low day, I guess, uh, kind of thing, if, if that's what we're looking at here. So then, right, this was, I just told her to do this running, even though I don't have it right here. Um, you know, just like do it's basic tempo runs. Um, you know, and I just chose to progress how long she was doing them for, and then progress how many sets she was doing them for. It just a, like a simple, simple progression. Um, you know, again to just really make sure that there's an increase in blood flow there um, to kind of promote the growth of. Uh, what's it, what are they called? Wow, capillaries, you know, and then hopefully to kind of give her more oxygen to pull from um, while she's doing these sorts of efforts over here. Um, as well, uh, this is like, this is, I, I think, like, this is a super aerobic exercise. Like, if you say to someone, hey, you're not going to go super hard and you're going to rest for 48 seconds, then it's got to be an aerobic exercise. Oh, okay. So I was gonna ask this. It's like twelve seconds and then forty seconds rest yeah. ten times. Yeah. So really, like working it okay. at a at a really light pace for twelve seconds, then resting for forty eight seconds, and then okay. repeating that ten times. Okay. Um. And so really, like my my objective here wasn't even really like the aerobic system or mm. like anything that you can associate with uh, tempo runs. Mm. I'm I'm actually really was really concerned about um, brain derived neurotrophic factor one, my friend, um, which is basically a really fancy way of saying learning, mm -hmm. um, because you know here right we have an Olympic PVC foundation, and this individual was like I really 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 want to learn um, how to. Um, you know, Olympic lift, even though, you know, they were middle-aged, which is fine, right? But this, I think, like this stuff kind of sets the stage for this stuff in that, you know, this is something that requires, like that I told her to focus on like running, even though the, the true form runner is great because it sets you up really well. Like if you just tell someone to like push fluidly and efficiently, then you're going to get someone who like looks pretty good running. Mm. Like, like even I look pretty good running on that thing, which is a scary, scary thought. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so like it's, a, it's, it's, you can make it as high focus as you want to, and you can make it, you know, as hard as you want to, but really I just wanted her to start kind of, you know, exposing herself to the things that were going to kind of start the process of, of learning in the human body mm -hmm. so that then coming down here, she would be primed to uh, learn a new motor skill. And I mean, this is really just like the most basic freaking Olympic foundational day you can get really, I think, um, you know, I mean, like, I don't, I don't really have any other explanation for it other than, like, eventually, you know, you transfer to using hopefully, like, a weighted PVC and then hopefully a, a barbell and then mm. hopefully being able to just go with, you know, a few select movements from this. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I, like, obviously, like, there's a long way to go, right? Like, I think even just starting, like, she would need to learn how to front squat really well before even getting to, you know, any of this stuff. Yeah. So, like, obviously, there's there's some still some barriers here in the program, but whatever. Like, screw it. You know, we're just tossing that. And then um, med ball sit ups and breaths in plank. So twenty one fifty nine. This is again like kind of the constraint of the gym in that like, you know, I need to meet people where they expect to be, and that like there's a lot of CrossFit stuff that happens at the gym. So like, I just wanted to make it like a little more like biomechanically efficient again, like teaching how to actually sit up with 
um, your uh, like transverse abdominis and obliques instead of just like keeping your spine rigid and straight and then just like sitting up with your hip flexors and mm. and your neck you know um so trying to do that a little bit and um so teaching someone how to do that right with like that good reach forward with the med ball sit up i just naturally exhaled there i'm not good um <laughs> and then you know feeling like a little bit of uh rib cage and uh, you know, side app and, and all that stuff. And then breaths in plank again, like trying to reinforce that position in a different uh, gravitational field. So like basically like if you have someone lying on their back, that's going to be the easiest position for them to manage gravity. Because like if they're going forward anteriorly, then suddenly gravity is pushing everything back into them. So they should be able to manage gravity really, really efficiently in a supine position. Mm. Then I kind of do a terrible job of progressing her to the hardest position in my head, which is trying to maintain some for form. Uh, wow, that was terrible. Some form of flexion uh, while gravity is tugging everything forward um, mm. with this breath, uh, with the breath in plank. Okay, any questions so far? No, nah, nothing. Okay, I'm going to switch hats again. Uh, all right, this time we have Northeastern, Lovely. you know, the OG internship. <sighs> you know, go uh, go Northeastern men's ice hockey, women's ice hockey. Here we go. I'm going to claim the bean pot for the second year in, the, in a row. Um, maybe third year in a row, I don't remember. The now. Western mascot, do you know that at least? What? Do you know their mascot? It's a husky. Okay, just making sure. Don't no no you know don't patronize me. You, <laughs> know they, you know who they beat? You know who they've beaten uh, every year they've gotten the bean pot there, buddy? No, I don't. Uh, Boston University. Oh, I don't know about them. <sighs> it's only like you spent your whole summer there. Um. Anyways, let's go on to this thing. So again, like I said, um. This person had like a supremely uh, nutated sacrum. So um, getting her heels <laughs> elevated and goblet squatting her, just again, like this high rep stuff to kind of promote motor learning. Um, you know, 30 reps, 40 reps, 36 reps, 48 reps. You know, it's just a, it's a lot of work, but it's not at a high enough intensity to really promote change. It's just like just learning how to sit straight down in a squat instead of pushing your butt back in space. Um, you know, and this was, this was like one in a long, long line of, of my attempts to get her to really, really squat. And it looked better and better, but like people just freak out about like elevating your heels a lot. Um, so... It was just, it was difficult to really get someone to, like, get this individual anyway to, to really, really squat because I just needed to elevate her heels a ton to get her to do that. And she was like, oh, my God, my knees are going to hurt. I was like, no, they're not. Like, you're, you're squatting with 18 pounds. Don't worry about it. Just go down. Um, <laughs> and then uh, high to low plank. Uh, this is a money movement, I think, if you can do it decently well and decently slowly, then it's a really good like reaching activity. Again, challenging that center of, uh, or challenging that gravitational field to uh, kind of like, again, maintain some sort of flexion on one side as you're extending on the other and just, you know, rotating and rotating and rotating. My entire spine just popped. Um, <laughs> split squat, again, if you coach this thing right, then it's absolutely money for someone with a extremely mutated sacrum. Um, really, like, I think it's the easiest way to get someone who has a mutated sacrum to squat. You just limit the range of motion mm. coming up and how far apart they spread their legs. Mm. And that's, like, the whole squat to me. Mm. Uh, like, you know, if you can just put someone's heel on the wall push them through that, like push through that heel, find their hamstring on the forward leg, 
and then just be like, okay, now go down slowly. And then have them come back up and then limit them when they start to uh, nutate. Like, you're squatting. Congratulations. Um, and then lamb I press again. Um, so you're, you're coming like down, right? Rotating back a little bit and then coming back up. So again, like a good rotational activity there, just in an upper body, uh, movement, like a you know, vertical push movement. So that's just, you know, dandy, um, chest supported row again, like basically like using a constraint to teach two things. One control of a sternum um, because it's impossible to like go like this or like this when you're chest supported rowing without it being super obvious and having a coach be like hey like that looks terrible um, and then uh, you know again like progressing you're here so like challenging motor learning motor learning motor learning weight so like week four is adding some weight to it to, to really challenge that position um, but only after, like, I feel like she's established a really good position with these three weeks here. Um, you know, and then the other thing that's really promoting is, like, if your rib cage is stuck against a bench, then you have to move your scapula on a rib cage to row that weight. Like, you can't just be like, okay, and here we go, and I'm moving my chest forward, and I'm moving my chest backwards to row this thing. You have to actually, like, reach and then row back. And so you have to basically like protract and retract the scapula, you know, and elevate it and depress it a little bit and like just have good scapular motion to chest supported row. Mm. Um, and then uh, eccentric push up with a pause. Again, just hitting him with that uh, for a little more work in the push up stuff and 90 90 breathing. It's as simple as just going a little parasympathetic and restoring some uh, sacral counter nutation. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now so that we can go back to part of being beautiful. Stop sharing. Okay, I think we're back to regular old podcast format, I think. I hope. Is that what it looks like on your screen? Yeah, yeah, no, you're pretty big on my screen, man. Great. Yeah. All right, Artie. I can't wait to pick yours apart like that. Freaking vulture. I honestly feel like you're gonna pick mine up for I, I, I hope you uh you know kind of li live up to this. <laughs> right back here. Dude, I have like one question, like with the split squat man, like with the um counter mutation mutation though, like um do you like is that really though something you should like put a lot of focus on though, do you feel or, like what is your thoughts on that? Um I kind of think so like for that individual, uh well Actually, let me let me restart that. For basically every person that came into the gym this summer, mm. they're they're all middle aged, mm. and they're all just like stuck in excessive extension, mm. and they'd be like, "Oh, my back is getting killing me," and you're just like, you know, and standing there, I'm like looking at them, and they're like, "Okay, this is what PRI talks about right here," <laughs> you know, like what like the human being that's standing in front of me is what PRI talks about, mm. and so. You know, I kind of am just like, I should probably focus on this, you know, and that's that's why I personally focus on it. If you have someone who's like not in pain and is performing well, then I, I don't know how much you should focus on it mm. uh, because like from and this is a podcast from uh, at least three years ago, probably longer. But if you haven't listened to Kyle Dobbs on uh the 80-20 principle, I think is literally the podcast name. I don't remember who it's by. But uh, yeah, write that down. <laughs> um, Gosh, I'm going to make... He, he has a great quote in it. Um, and it was, it was uh, you know, no one's going to go to the water cooler and say, oh yeah, I mean, you know, I got my ZOA back. They're going to be like, I squatted 500 pounds. You know, like, it's a it's a societal thing. Like no one's gonna care about like, yeah, I just freaking got my my you know ribs down on that side, baby. Like my left abs, yeah, I have them. Like what's up? Like no one's <laughs> gonna care about that. Like people are gonna go into the into the gym and be like, I'm gonna squat and I'm gonna bench and I'm gonna deadlift, 
and then I'm going to walk out of the gym and I'm going to go home. Like that's their plan, Mm. (laughs) you know? And like my plan is like, we're going to do those things, but I want you to, to really know that, you know, I want you to come back to me over and over again and never have pain Mm. unless we're, we're going to push really hard for like, an endurance goal, a strength goal, a power goal, a sport goal, you know, like till that point, like you shouldn't be that banged up. Yeah. 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 That's kind of because I was just like thinking that as well. The words say, you know, even though someone might show signs of, like say, um, from my counter, counter nutrition is when it's like on the right or my corral. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like something like that, you know, and it's like people say, like, oh, you should, like, you should be careful with that, you know, but if someone is, like, if it's fine for them, you know, if there's no, no any signs of pain, like, they're fine, like, doing that, just, like, loading up the bar, like, that's the, I just don't feel like there's a need, but, you know, in your case, if it's, like, you know, someone shoves like that, and, like, oh, like, I'm constantly in back pain, then, yeah, then you kind of definitely need to do something about it, but. Yeah, I mean, something I played around with last year with Iron Sports was, like, the, the C block of the program, Mm. would literally just be like some sort of restorative movement like and it it doesn't you know it didn't have to be like pri it just happened you know it it would be just like something that i thought would put them in a better position biomechanically Mm -hmm. to like achieve a a better movement pattern like a a two kettlebell squat it was like i think my go-to during um you know squat days like simple as that you know Mm. and just like to me it's just doing like just enough to keep someone out of pain you know and then inevitably like they're probably gonna have pain um because that just happens you know and pain science is stupid and confusing and i hate it um so like eventually they're probably gonna be in pain and so you're gonna need to um kind of do something you know increase the amount of stuff you're doing but until that point like i think it should be just enough yeah uh, wouldn't you also do some of that, you know, the correctives, like, before the actual lift? Like, you, would you only do, like, as a C block? Um, the the like things me. we did before lift, would, like, they look different than, like, after lift. Because before lift, I, I want it to be, like, a little bit higher intensity. Mm, okay. Almost. Um, you know, and, like, really just forcing people to, like, feel some form of muscle working as opposed to just like going down there without like any sort of sensory movement beforehand. Mm, mm. No, that, that makes sense. Makes me make sense. But yeah, man, honestly, like, I don't, I don't know. I can't really rip your program apart like that much to be honest. Cause like, the thing is like, I, I, even though it's like, it's very simple, but I feel like, you know, for someone like that, it, it needs to be pretty simple. Cause like, you know, yeah. you basically, I feel like, you know, if I was her and like you did that to me, like I would want to come back to you because it's like, you know, A, you're working like, like if he wants to improve like running, there is that, you know, wants to improve, like going to get the push up, there is that. And it's just like main stuff where like have her, you know, be a more functional human being and like a better human being. So it's like, you know, and that's the thing too, is I feel like, like it's, especially at least like for me sometimes, like I overcomplicate that I'm like, I want to do like something really like awesome for them, like something really, but like there's no need for that because they might just that they might feel like they're not competent enough and they feel bad and then they wanna they're not gonna wanna come back to you. So it's like it's just keep it simple and then just, you know, progress the like increase the sets, the reps, kinda of they did man. So yeah, dude, like Yeah, I mean I, don't, I I feel like sometimes it's it's less about like the actual program and more about well, I actually think most of the time it's less about the actual program and more about like the individual's response to it and how you coach it. And that's, yeah, yeah. Because, like, because I mean, you know, if I gave, if I just like shot that in an email to someone and said, hey, like take someone through this, you know, it, it would look entirely differently from me. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right. And I mean, like, even when I presented that program in Special Pops, like last semester, mm. you know, like I guarantee that everyone in that room was thinking different things about, like, about, you know, how the program was working. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, like, I don't know. It's just every coach does it a little differently, and it's a beautiful thing sometimes. Yeah, it just goes down to, you know, like, I feel like the coaching philosophy, you know, everybody has, like, their, 
their own thing that they're gonna focus more on or that they you know want to like, implement to someone so it's like you know you can't always please everyone so that's like where like you know you coach it one way like really putting a focus on like this particular thing like someone else will do coaching like, in a whole different way you know so it's you know just up for grabs basically and just you know play with it experiment and yeah exactly man let's see that program let's do this right now yeah Oh, are we just doing mine today? No, we're just doing yours, man. Like, oh, I that's really awkward. Prepared, man. Like, I haven't like, set it up like, nicely than oh. you. <laughs> sorry, I didn't know that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, I didn't know we were just doing mine. Um, yeah, I mean, I I also kind of want to talk about something I've been, I, I played with, with this lady that I kind of forgot to say when I was doing the thing, but whatever. Um, right. So, like, personally, I kind of think, you know, maybe doing the movement that is really like strong for them, like squatting or deadlifting, depending on their sacral position, like might be more optimal because like, especially in this population, because like you can really, if someone just, you know, has a beautiful deadlift where it's just like, oh my God, you know, your pelvis is coming back in space. You know, you can feel your hamstrings. You can feel the sides of your abs working. You don't just feel your back like ripping apart. Maybe we should do this because it requires much less motor learning and I can load it significantly better and I can improve like and you know even not even load that was a poor choice of words I guess. I can progress this significantly more than I can a squat because you need to learn how to squat in order to like actually push yourself in the squat. Mm. You know, and, and so I think, like, from that perspective, like, I, I've started programming a little bit like that for people. And, you know, especially with, with this client where, like, strength wasn't her goal. Like, it was entirely endurance-based. Yeah. You know, it really, you know, it was it was helpful to me to program that way because, like, obviously there was one big strength day there. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that was really, like, less about her and more about me because, personally, like, strength is something that, you know, if you're stronger, then there's less of a chance you'll die. And so, you know, I just, I just rather, I would rather this lady not die, you know. And, like, right, there, there are things that, you know, God forbid can happen, but, you know, you can still, you know, kind of prevent some things from happening and... and you know, if you're if you're more aerobically fit and you're you're strong you're more stronger and you're you know, and you're more young and you're uh you're more or less injured, you know, obviously more better and you can do things for longer. So it's like, you know, why not include some strength work in there in a position that she really doesn't have to learn? She can just freaking destroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it just goes down again, like just like keeping it simple, you know, that's like I feel, and, and it's again, you know, I feel like just um, like well, actually, like yeah, not only just like just keeping it simple and actually putting people in optimal states to do certain exercises. That's like where, um, like I, 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 it really pisses me off sometimes. Not even a lie, like when we have clients that come in, and it's like, especially the females, and they're like, I want to get like, I wanna, especially like the older ones. We have like one, she's like. I think 16, she's like, I used to have a butt. It used to be like this nice peach, and now it's just like kind of a little bit, and like I want to lift it up. And I'm like, just like, you know, like, there's like the stuff that they're, they're doing, it's like ridiculous. You know, they watch like fucking Instagram or whatever, like whatever they see these girls doing this stuff. And like, sure, that shit works, you know, but like, not really. It's not going to give you like what you want, you know, so it's like, but that's the thing too. I mean, I like, just like people see all this crap, and it's just like, might be like there's some really complicated bullshit with the kettlebell or something like you don't need that like you just need like something very simple for you to like start off at least with and then maybe progress so you don't even need to go like there because it's like there's like so many better things to do and like bring you in a better state where you can actually work more muscles and actually feel it much more instead of doing some just like random shit you know but yeah like as i said it's always the females man it's never the guys like the guys are just, like i don't know why but like at least the ones we have like come in like they're always more um kind of like open to do all this stuff like the females are just like like no like they need to like they, they need to really feel like especially like when it's like the lower body like they need to like just feel it like, like just like you know like the donkey kicks and stuff like that they need to do stuff like that they just like 
they're so used to it. Well, with the guys, it's like a whole different thing, you know. It's like you can actually with them, like, they're more okay. Like you know, like okay, I'm gonna try this, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. But like, with the females, it's like, huh? Like they're just like so hesitant to everything. Like literally everything you try, you know. Like I'm gonna help you, like you know, like reposition your rib cage, for example, or like do this, this, you know, like have you feel like more hamstrings? And, like no, like just like so fucking, you know, yeah. resistant to it and. I don't. I don't know, man. I, I. I don't know, but it's a. It's a process. It's a process. Yeah, I mean, when when that happens, and like I agree, like it is generally more, generally more females. I think in my experience, it's been about the same males versus females mm. in terms of like people. Like I. I. You know, honestly, like I feel pretty lucky to have worked at the gym that I had programmed this individual clients for because like. There is like a, a core group of women that go there that are just savages, <laughs> like just absolute savages. Like, you know, like you could definitely beat me in Murph and like then just like go for a 20 mile bike ride. Just like this, like seriously, this lady comes in who is, um, she, I think she's over 50 and she literally like came in and was like, yeah, so I just biked 20 miles. Um, you know, I don't know what I want to do now, you know, cause she, like, she's a client that we let have like some autonomy because like she has worked out for so long. And then, Dude. so she comes in and ends up doing a fucking mini Murph. Dude, what the fuck? Like she did like 50 pull-ups, like hundred push-ups, like 150 squats, and then went for a mile run. And, and, and I was like, holy shit. Like, what just happened? Because like is, this lady just crushed it, dude. But honestly, man, like women are like that. Like they're fun. there's like some really badasses. Like I was listening to Joe. Yeah. Like they had this dude who did uh, like some swimming. Yeah, like into islands, and he told us like there's this woman who I don't remember exactly exactly what like pace she was keeping, but like she was keeping like an unreal pace. It's like you know less than a second all the time. Like you know she's like having like a struggle like that just like yeah. and then she's keeping that same pace for things it was like i think it was 15 or 20 miles it's like ridiculous man yeah. but it's just i don't know like i said it's like but this is still talking about like for that particular thing like where women are like better when it comes to the long distance swimming because of i don't know exactly what was it something about like you know their hips and like something about like the position of their hips and then like they're more being fat around the area and that's like helping them somehow in the water i don't know exactly what but like the, but the, the, the the main thing is like just that there's some fucking savage women out there man it's just like unreal you know yeah. it's ridiculous yeah i mean truthfully like i keep going back and forth on if uh like women are more physiologically ready to go than men are but yeah. well, like either way they're savages you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. they're just absolute tanks uh yeah and i mean some of the guys that i i have attempted to coach have just been like what the hell is happening right now <laughs> i mean like the guy i i wish i had the program but i don't i didn't save it right um but like i think i mentioned this guy last week and that like he's like a small like plastic doll like it's just shocking i'm like okay we're gonna do a 30 pound squat and like the next day he'll come in and be like oh my back is so up like you're just like Oh, oh, you know, and then, or, you know, I mean, the classic college bro is like, so, uh, you know, deck, let me ask you a question, man. I'm not getting muscle mass. Like I'm not gaining any muscle mass and like, you're huge. So like you need to, you, you must know how to gain muscle mass. And I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. Whatever. What's up? And you know, they, they describe their workout program to me and I'm like, wait, 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 you just said you did two sets of five on the squats. They're like, yeah, but then after that, I did a leg press for three sets of 10. And you're just like, oh my God, someone kill me. Like, this is, this is what I've dedicated my life to, and this is what you're doing with it? I hate you, you know? And that, that often happens. But um, yeah. whenever, whenever someone comes in and is like, yeah, you know, like, uh, I do a lot of butt kicks and stuff, and, like, I refuse to change that for some dumbass in a backwards hat who's telling me what to do in bare feet, you know. Um, like, you don't even look like a personal trainer. You're fat, and, you know, 
Like, you don't have a sleeve of tattoos. What's up? And Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and, and when that happens, because it often does, mm. um, I will say, okay, I just want you to try it for one set my way. And, you know, and, and people are generally pretty, pretty agreeing to that, you know. And um, so... Like you've seen, I think you saw this happen because last year at Iron Sports, like we had a girl who was exactly like that. Like afterwards, she was like, I got to get my ab workout in. And I was like, okay, sure. And like looked at her and was like, um, I don't really think you have abs. And she pulls up her shirt. I think I've mentioned this several times on the podcast. She pulls up her shirt, shows me her abs. I have her do one ab variation with like some flexion through her rib cage and spine. And she's just like, oh my God. You know, and then same thing with like the band walks, which are like the the worst things ever. Um, we had a different girl on the team who had like, who was just like sticking her butt straight back, like extending her lumbar spine, and was just like, okay, now I'm gonna abduct my leg, and you know, it was just like it was the worst thing ever. And she, I was like, what do you feel when you do that? She was like, generally a horrible cramping pain on the side of my butt. That's the muscle working, right? I was like, no, that is your TFL working yeah. instead of instead of your hip flexor, lady. Dude, but that's what I mean, man. It's like, it's ridiculous, you know? It's just like it's the shit that they go through, like, especially, like yeah. I said, generally, not all the time, it's just, just guys as well, but I think like generally it's always girls or women just like do this random shit, you know, but... Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, like, knowing PRI is, like, having just the, the world's biggest cheat code to, like, optimizing the hell out of this stuff. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I, I was literally like, okay, I want you to shift onto your left leg. And she was like, okay. It's like, do you feel your hamstring on that side? She's like, yeah. It's like, great. Now pick up. Now, like, keep your hips tucked underneath you. Iffy coaching there on my part, I'll be honest. And I want you to push your right heel away from you. And she does that. And she's like, oh, my God, my ass. And I was like, great. Now transfer your weight onto your left or, or your right side. And then keep, like, then do the opposite on your left side. Like, push the heel away from you. And she's like, oh, my God, my left ass. And I was like, yes. Like, this is how you should do band walks if you're going to do band walks for some ungodly reason. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, because, like, personally, I don't feel like I'm, I'm enough of an asshole. Like, some people who have graduated from this place with a, a PhD in exercise physiology, Patrick Davidson, uh, to just be like, you shouldn't do that. You know, like, I just don't think I'm enough of an asshole to do that. Plus, like, I want to just, you know, I just want to keep these people on the team because, you know, I like to have, you know, a large audience to coach. Instead of just, you know, three people. So I just kind of optimize the hell out of their movement. You know, even if it's just like a little bit, still helps. Yeah, yeah. Still <laughs> crushing glute bumps. <laughs> yeah, dude. But <laughs> yeah, honestly, man, like, I just like, I don't know, like, I'm trying the same way, man. Like, where it's like, even with like you, like, you sometimes, you know, you can have, get like five stupid people and like angry, like, I just, I don't know, I just, I can't see myself do that. Like, I just can't, you know, because I'm, like, I'm too lovely, I'm too lovable when it comes to like, people, like, when it comes to, like, coaching someone, because uh, I just, like, I feel like if you do it, like, in a bad way, you just, like, uh, get pissed at them for, like, doing something like that, it's, like, they're going to get mad, and they're just, like, fuck this, like, fuck him, like, I'm not going to, it's not even going to work out anymore, I'm going to go back to the way I was, and, like, a lot of so it's, like, I don't know, but the same thing, it's, like, again, it's, like, knowing people where it's, same thing if you're a, coach in any sport or like you know a leader in a business or whatever it's like some people respond better to you know you being aggressive at them while others you kind of they need a little pat on the back you know like oh you're doing great you did amazing yesterday with their report or someone else needs to be just like really strict with them like hey what are you doing like are you thinking like are you using your head you know so it's like you gotta know the people it's like out of uh psychology man but yeah yeah it's it's it's, 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 fun. it's kind of funny Cause like, uh, yeah, I mean like Pat said this in his podcast like this week, mm. you know, which is kind of hilarious and like listening to him, I was like, I don't do that. Like I would never do that to people. And then 
right now I'm like, wait, I do that to basically everyone I meet. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like with the men on Iron Sports, I am like terribly direct with them. Just like, look, that was terrible. Like that squat looked like garbage. And they're just like, oh, damn. You know, and then two weeks later, they've cleaned it up. And I'm just like, hey, that looks great. And they're like, oh, thanks, dude. And then, you know, then like I start joking with them and they will proceed to joke back. And then, boom, I know I have them for life. And it's the easiest thing ever. Mm, mm. <laughs> you know, at like at the at the gym, I'm like, OK, I'm just going to, you know, show this person how much I care about them through the exercises that I'm doing to them. Mm. and uh, or the exercise that I'm forcing them to do and then uh, hopefully they just think that I'm great and they'll just keep coming back yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and I'm, I'm like kind of the same way with the male clients at the gym too where I'm just like that was not amazing I'm not gonna lie to you you know like just yeah just ridiculousness Sometimes, but uh, is there a, a, a smoke detector going off in your house? No, like, man. for battery? No, I don't know. I, I, I just keep, I keep hearing like some fucking clinging with like some spoon against the plate or something. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know, man. There's a lot of spooky shit here, man. I have literally no idea what's going on. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Yeah, so am I. Good. Um, so, I mean, do you think we can wrap this up, or uh, you want to keep talking about something? Oh boy! No, honestly, I feel pretty good. You know, like um, I see. I, I feel yeah, I feel pretty good. I have not really too many questions or anything. Like, you know, too burning on my heart that I want to share with the public and you. So yeah, yeah. I feel like we can wrap it up. You know, but I'm gonna yeah. let you. I'm, I'm gonna let you wrap it up. You know, you've been. So sure. great today, you know, you've been talking a lot, so I want you to talk a little bit more to hear your voice. That's terrible. Why would you do that to everyone listening? All two people. Hi, Dad. Oh, he got, actually, he got really pissed at me. He didn't get really pissed at me. He just, he was like, why no shout out this week? <laughs> like two weeks ago, because we didn't say hi to him. Like, I don't know. But um, anyway... <laughs> So, to the two people listening, I don't know why you'd want to hear me talk more, but uh, I, I really want to hear from you, like, what, what are we going to expect um, for, from you next week in terms of programming? Dude, I honestly, I don't know, man, like, because I'm, I'm also, like, debating, like, which program, like, to show, like, either, like, the one, like, the triphasic one or, like, a recent one I did, like, with a client, that's, like, also the thing, but... but I don't know. I'm thinking probably about doing like the client one after triphasic, just because like I think it's uh, a bit. It's just like a bit easier, and, like not as complicated to explain and just you know go through. Maybe like later down the road we can we can do like more in depth. Like you know you can like show a, like a program you do with Iron Sports or something like that. You know as well, kind of like more focus like that. But I think right now I'm probably gonna do the other one. So yeah. But honestly, oh, yeah. I, what, you, what you what you expect is uh, some uh, great names. And just a great layout, and my voice as well. Listening to that for I don't know, probably like at least half an hour, I guess. So yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I, I I think that that would be really good if we did uh, if we did one if we just did four episodes on programming <laughs> because uh, I think maybe we should split them up a little bit and spread them out. But uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. because uh, I have I have a rugby program that I'm extremely excited to share that i think is really i think is really top notch yeah, yeah personal opinion but um yeah so all right let's just I'll, I'll wrap this up for us all um so you know in summary um nutation counter nutation these are words that have been said a lot um you know, I mean, I think that today uh, people saw my mind unfold in the 
both the physiologic and biomechanical things that I think about uh, when I sit down to write a program, um, you know, and try to kind of almost, almost guess because unfortunately I don't, I am not able to uh, screen everyone that comes through the gym uh, in the way that I'd like to screen them, personal opinion or not personal opinion, just how it works, how it happens. Um, you know, how it, how it, my mind works when I'm trying to, uh, you know, write the program for them and just based off of how they move. And, uh, yeah, so I hope that everyone kind of took something away from that. Once again, if you've listened this far, why have you listened this far? That's what I want to know. Uh, uh, but if you have, I'm extremely grateful uh, as I'm sure Artem is. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, really, other than that, we'll see you next week with uh, Artem's program. I'm going to try not to rip it apart. I'm just going to sit back, watch, and enjoy as RDB presents to me. Uh, you know, I can't wait. I'm sure he can wait. I'm sure he's terrified waiting for uh, next Sunday when we record this thing. Um, yeah, next Sunday. Honestly, if we, if we could do Saturday, that would be better, honestly. We can do Saturday. Next yeah. Saturday when we record this thing. Yeah, um, we're going to a derby here in Sweden on Sunday. That's why. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, really, really publicize that, buddy. Yeah. Um, you know, anyways, uh, I have been, you know what? And I, actually, how about this? If you're still still listening to this for some ungodly reason, then uh, let's just do, if you have any questions about my program, then uh, why don't you head over to my Facebook page, Declan Morrissey, D-E-C-L-A-N-M-O-R-R-I-S-S-E-Y. Um, literally. Link, link in the description as well. Link in the there. description. Literally the only thing that's on there are these podcasts and my birthday. Um, because unfortunately I didn't realize that Facebook would publicize my birthday because <laughs> I'm kind of dumb. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, that's probably the best way to reach me mm. is, a, is a comment on the post that I'll make about this on Facebook. Mm. Uh, and if you have questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them with uh with as much with as little words as possible and is in in the least pat davidson way i possibly can you know so i'll be nice to you is what i'm saying right now because i try to be a nice person um just not to artem so uh yeah this has been oceans apart episode 17 uh thank you for tuning in and you have a great day